So I have everything that I need here to make naan. All-purpose flour, oil, yeast, sugar, table salt, a little warm water, and some yogurt. This yogurt, incidentally, was in the freezer because I wasn't able to use all of it on time, so I froze it. So as a result, it's all soupy, but that totally does not matter for this dish. So our first step is to bloom the yeast and the sugar together. And you want your water to be between like 105 and 115 degrees, otherwise you'll kill the yeast. Bloom that for five minutes until the yeast gets frothy. Okay, we are nice and frothy now. Time to add our other ingredients. You got two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, tablespoon of oil, a half teaspoon of salt, and a half a cup of yogurt. And you just stir it until it all comes together and then I'm gonna knead it for 10 minutes. And if you're new to bread making and intimidated by the whole thing, uh, don't worry, all those little finicky window pane test proof for blah -de blah like you don't need a fancy proving drawer, you don't need a thermometer, you don't need any of those things. It's like, yeah, there's a lot of fine tuning things to bread making, and if you do all of those, those things perfectly, your bread will be that much better, but it's like, even if you're a beginner, especially with something like naan, like a flatbread, it's it's a lot harder to mess this up because we don't make a loaf with naan. You fry it in a pan. Each naan takes like one to two minutes to cook. So if you mess one up, you just do better with the next one. You got eight chances. Oh yeah, this looks pretty good. It's coming together pretty nicely. I might have to add a little more flour when I need it. I'm like using the mound of dough to get all the bits off of the bottom of the bowl. And then I'm also going to use this Pyrex bowl later to rise it. So I recently got smart and discovered that, hey, it works so much better to just knead it on your clean countertop <laughs> than bother with a big cutting board that moves around on you. So I love this dough so much. It is an incredibly gentle dough. You don't want to add too much flour to it. I'm just trying to get my work surface non-sticky. But yeah, you basically want to knead it for 10 minutes, and if you're new to bread making, uh, set a timer for 10 minutes, because <laughs> you're going to get tired. Uh, I mean, depending on how strong you are, how much endurance you have, you're going to get tired after like one minute or five minutes, and you're going to want to stop. But they're really a lot better if you knead them the whole way, so set a timer. I'll see you in 10 minutes. All right, this is our beautiful dough. It feels like a giant wad of chewing gum after you've been chewing it for a while and it's lost all its flavor. It's just nice and smooth and a little sticky, but it releases off of the fingers. And my hands are nice and clean. So I've got the original bowl that I mixed it in so I don't have to clean extra dishes. And there's about a teaspoon of oil there and I'm just kind of using the dough to spread the oil all around the bowl. And then I've put the dough ball in the center with the oil slick on top. And you want to cover it and let it rise in a warm place for one hour. It is winter, it is not warm anywhere in here. I can't just put it outside in the sun because I live in an apartment complex and someone might come by and take it. So I'm going to put it on top of my oven set on a warm setting. So as you can see, my non dough has risen beautifully. It is super puffy, so time to deflate it. And I'm going to briefly knead this and separate it into eight pieces because we're making eight nons total. Then I'm going to roll them out and griddle them. Meanwhile, I've got three tablespoons of butter and two cloves of pulverized garlic, which I'm just going to gently melt because we're going to brush the nons with this after we cook them. Just pushing out the extra air bubbles redistributing everything into one nice cohesive block. And this is where if you were a super precise cook or baker you'd like weigh out and portion out all of the the nons. I don't particularly care that much. <laughs> I'm just eyeballing it. So divide it in half and then divide each half in half and then divide each of those halves in half. And then if you find that like any one non is like significantly bigger than the other nons, then you can just kind of pick off little pieces and redistribute them. Like these two feel like they're pretty big and this one's really small. So 
I'm just going to pick a little piece off of this guy and put it on this guy and then this guy onto this guy. Yeah, that's about right. So for easier rolling, take this and I just kind of turn it in on itself like this. So there's a seam at the bottom, flip it and boom, you have a nice round piece to roll out. Now we are not going to roll these into round nons. The classic non shape is a little more teardropped, which is actually easier to roll. I'm just going to show you how I roll them once. <laughs> it's pretty hard to do all of this on camera while I'm doing other things and heating a pan, so I'm just going to show you one. It's really easy. You just want to roll it out thinly, but not like super, super thinly. These are going to be pretty much the same size as nons that you would buy like in a bag at the grocery store. So just kind of have that in mind while you're rolling them out. They are flatbread, so they are supposed to be pretty flat. And it's kind of hard to roll this out with my tripod in the way, but anyway, there you go. You want to roll all eight out so they're like this. I pretty much, I roll them as I go. Again, I, I like to kind of prep as I go along. So meanwhile, while I'm going to be rolling out and cooking all of these, they have a nice cast iron skillet on the stove and I'm heating it to, this is a cheap apartment stove, so I'm heating it to like four out of ten, four to five. I always overheat this and my first few nons get burnt a little bit. So I've, this is like my fifth time making non. So I'm, I'm learning a little bit and I'm making it a little lower. Um, so yeah, you do not cook these in an oven. You know, ideally you'd make them in a tandoor oven, but nobody has those in the States. Uh, you know, and a lot of us live in cheap apartments and have cheap apartment stoves. So it's actually best to griddle it on the stovetop and just a cast iron skillet. Only about 30 seconds per side, believe it or not. While that's heating, I also have a towel ready to receive my nons. Just like uh, when I make tortillas, I like to cover the flatbreads, the nons, any kind of flatbread really that I make, I like to cover it as I make it so that it stays warm and moist. Otherwise they dry out and get kind of crackly. Okay, my pan is almost there. Meanwhile, I've got my three tablespoons of butter with two cloves of pulverized garlic and a little salt melted and ready to go with a brush. So it's very important that you do not get burnt flour. <laughs> burnt flour is not your friend. Before I put the nons in the pan, I try to brush off as much stray flour as I can. It's just me and my husband, so I can blow on it too. <sighs> get it as dry as I possibly can, just so that I don't get burnt flour. And this pan is seasoned, but it is not greased. There's not like oil slick in there. Wisps of smoke are starting to come up, so it is ready. I also have ready one of these babies to flip it. I don't know how well you can see it, but it is already starting to bubble up in places. It has only been on here for something like 15 seconds. Like I said, these things cook up super quickly. Well, there it goes. Bubble, bubble, bubble. You can kind of check on it as it goes along. And yeah, with naan, you want to err on the side of undercooking rather than overcooking, especially since uh, this recipe makes eight and my husband and I are not going to eat them all today. So, um, and they taste so much better. Leftover naans taste so much better. Incidentally, store-bought naan as well tastes better if you heat it in like the toaster oven or the oven before you eat it. And the action of heating it or reheating it does cook it more. Ooh, look at those beautiful bubbles. <laughs> that was my cat meowing off screen. Hmm. <laughs> That beautiful color there. Could use even a little more. I, I, again, I take the first couple nons to figure out uh, just how hot my pan needs to be. I need to see what my cat wants, except I can't walk away from this non. She'll just have to keep screaming about whatever it is. It's probably not that important. And she just wants attention. Actually, you know, she probably smells the melted butter. She, Hermione, my little calico, the one who's screaming right now, she loves bread. Look at that. And that's about what you're looking for. You want these little splatters of brownness in there. 
again, I think I mentioned this is like my fifth time making naan ever. <laughs> and the first time I made it, it was terrible. I did not use this recipe and I totally failed. They were all dry and tough. Uh, these are beautiful. So I didn't mention earlier, but yogurt uh, is really the key ingredient to this. If you are lactose intolerant or vegan, you can totally use a non-dairy yogurt. Uh, it should still work just as well. Um, but the sourness in that yogurt, it does two things. One, it just gives the naan a beautiful tangy flavor, very subtle. It's not like they're sour or anything. But the other thing that uh, buttermilk and yogurt does to baked goods, Southern USers figured this out a long time ago. It gives you a really tender crumb. So these naan are extremely, oh, look at that, it's beautiful. Extremely soft and just pillowy and delicious. Okay, I'm gonna remove you. Only gonna show this once because as I explained earlier, it's really hard to be like filming while cooking something like this. So anyway, I put it there and then cover it with, I paint it with garlic butter. And yeah, this towel is gonna get dirty with butter and garlic butter, but who cares? And then I cover it up so that it stays warm and steamed. And then I just keep griddling. And behold, their buttery, garlicky, pillowy, nani goodness. Hermione, can you tell everyone what's wrong? What have you been screaming about? Hermione, what is it? Oh, now you're quiet? Now you don't have anything to say? Hermione, what? Oh yes, we're going to play hard to get. Miney, you're such a tease. Can't you do something cute for the internet? <laughs>